Hello, exciting new feature to talk about today, mobile application management for Windows, specifically Edge right now, but generally Windows. Let's jump in and take a look. The issue that we normally have when we're talking about allowing users to access corporate resources from non-secure devices or devices that we don't own is that they can do this kind of thing. Here we have a non-Azure AD joint computer and not domain joint computer, just to use a, a standard login account that this user is using on their personal machine. They can choose Google Chrome, head over to portal.office.com, log in, type in their username and password, and if you've got MFA enabled, they may be prompted for MFA. If not, they're straight in. Here they go, they choose Outlook, and they've got access to their corporate mail on their personal device. That's probably not okay. And from here, they can take any of the information from this. For example, let's scroll down and find the payroll update that's just been sent through by Megan. And we can take all of this information, copy it and put it onto their personal device. Let's just open up Notepad. Straight into Notepad. And there we go. We have all of the information about the payroll update that Megan Bone has just sent through. Not good. And so then over to the solution. Mobile application management for Windows or Edge or whatever we're going to call it for now is probably going to solve a little bit of this problem that I've just been through. If we go to the Intune Admin Center and choose Apps, you'll see that in App Protect Policies and Create Policy, I have an additional option here, which isn't normally there. It probably won't be in your tenant if you're seeing this just after I've released this video. This feature is in public preview, which means that it should be... The normal meaning of public preview is that it eventually ends up in your tenant after a few days or, or week. But in this case, it's an opt-in uh, version of a public preview, so it won't be there for all tenants by default. So in this case, I've opted in, and I'm going to essentially show you how it works. So I'll choose this, and you can see it gives us these options across the top. We've got apps, data protection, health checks, assignments, I've already created one to save time in this. I've got this MAM for Edge policy right here. I'll choose Properties. Choose Edit on the apps. And you can see the only option I've got, or the only app I'm covering, is Microsoft Edge. That's the only one that's available right now in this preview. I'll choose Cancel, go back into Data Protection. And you can see we can specify whether we restrict the copying and receiving data to and from the application. So in this case, the the... DLP settings I've set are, it will allow us to receive data from all sources as opposed to no sources. And we can send org data to no destinations as opposed to all destinations. That means that essentially I can send data in to Edge, but not out of Edge. And that means things like documents and pictures and all that kind of stuff, saving to the desktop, for example. If I wanted to save a picture from Edge, then I wouldn't be able to do that under the current settings. Same applies to allowing cut, copy, and paste. It's set to no destination or source. I can't copy into or out of Microsoft Edge. Okay, I'll cancel that, go back out. Now health checks. This will be familiar if you've used mobile application management before. We can set offline grace periods for blocking access and wiping data, and also device conditions. We can set the maximum allowed device threat level based on defense for endpoint. Let's take a look at this in action. Once we've got the Intune App Protect policy in place, we need to enforce that it's used, otherwise it probably won't be used. So cancel that, get out of it, and we'll go to conditional access. I've created a conditional access policy to enforce the use of the app protection policy for Windows devices. Let me show you how that works. I have included my group of users that are in the personal device users group. I'm targeting all cloud apps. And the conditions I'm using are that the device platform is Windows and the client app is a browser. So in that case, if the device is Windows and the user is using a browser, then this policy will apply. In that case, we can also see that this the grant rule is that we need the app protection policy to apply. So if the user tries to access one of our cloud apps, Outlook, for example, 
from a browser on a Windows device, the app protection policy needs to be there. Now this really does only apply in my in the testing I'm doing right now to personal devices, not devices that are enrolled to Intune already. So what I also need to do, whilst I will set this to on and save it, I also need to filter it so that it doesn't apply to my devices that are already in Intune and compliant. And we do that by going to, uh, where is it, conditions, scroll down to the bottom, we've got filter for devices, and here we can say that we, if the device is uh, compliant, equal to true, then it will be excluded from this policy. Do that and save. So now if a user tries to access Microsoft Outlook on the web from a browser on a Windows device on a device that is not compliant with Intune, then this policy will apply. Let's take a look. In fact, I have one of those right here, don't I? I've got this Windows 11 device, which I tried to use Chrome to access uh, Outlook stuff before. And so from this desktop, I'm gonna go back into Chrome and try and go to portal.office.com. And what we'll see, hopefully, is that conditional access tells me I can't do this. Let's try that. You can't get there from here, launch in Edge. Right, and right now it's in public preview, so rather than choosing the launch in Edge button, I'm going to manually launch Edge in, in, the, dev, in the beta version so that we can see how it works properly. So I'm going to choose Microsoft Edge Beta, and from here I'm going to go to portal.office.com and choose Outlook. And we are in with some of the protections that I've set using the App Protect policy. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to head over to the payroll update that we received from Megan Bowen just a little while ago. I'm going to copy all of that stuff that I tried to copy last time. You just use right click, copy, and instead of allowing me to copy that to my clipboard, the message says your organization prevents you from copying content from this website. Okay, interesting. That's exactly what we were hoping for. And if we just try the inverse of that, I'm going to try and copy this text that I just put into Notepad and copy that. I'm going to try and paste that into the search bar right here. Paste. Paste as plain text, nothing at all. I'll try and paste it into a new email. Paste. Allow. Paste. Nope. It's not letting me paste it in, and that was one of the things we prevented. So the other thing I want to just quickly show you is that whilst I'm prevented from pasting into this Outlook app here, I can open a new tab, right click and paste, and it works just fine. So very interesting feature here that allows us to control exactly what can be done within the Outlook application, within the protected website. I think that's awesome. Now, as I mentioned, this is all in public preview right now, but it's not in a standard public preview. It's actually in, a, actually in a, an opt-in version of a public preview. So in order to get access to these features, you need to opt in and be onboarded into it. Because there are some additional prerequisites right now, like the version of Edge that we're using, the version of Windows that we're using, and a few flags that we need to set as part of the onboarding. But these features look incredibly valuable from what I've seen so far. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you next time.